guys, welcome to another uh, Mean Meister Look At video. This one, as you can probably tell from the title, is the Amstrad GX4000. Yeah, now this uh, this console, it was, I don't know exactly when it was released, it was released after the Mega Drive, SNES, etc. was out. Uh, it was basically Amstrad's answer to, you know, to try and answer these other companies and bring out a console. Um, Commodore had done the same with a sort of C64 one and it wasn't very successful so Amstrad thought they would do the same thing and bring out a, it's basically a version of the Amstrad CPC 464 I think it is. No, I'm not really familiar with Amstrad's, I've never actually owned one, well that's not technically true, I did own one for a very short time but due to having to use the monitor um, with it, it was in the loft most of the time so I actually sold it. But yeah, this one here, the GX4000, now, there seems to, over the last, I don't know, over the last maybe five years, there seems to have become, there seems to have been a, an availability of stock of old, old systems. Um, this one included, I mean, I got myself a, a PC Engine, which, uh, I mean, I think the, it was like mint condition, never really been opened, and uh, I think, I mean, I don't know when that came out, mid-90s. So there's obviously factories or storage places dotted around the place that have unsold stock and obviously somebody buys them and then sells them. So yeah, I got this for, what was it, 35 quid eh, plus delivery. I thought, why not? I mean, it's it's absolutely brand new looking. You know, there's a few wee, few couple of wee marks in the box, but you know what, I don't really give a shit about that. Um, I buy games to actually play them. I buy consoles to play them, not to store in boxes, but you know, if it's got a, a nice box then all the better, you know, because uh, if I do realise it's a pile of rubbish and I can sell it, then uh, the fact that these things are boxed uh, always adds to the value. But yeah, these things are selling pretty cheap, you know, um, but the thing is, in probably, you know, 10 years time, there'll not be any more of these about, so I always think that when you buy stuff like that, you're always, it's always a bit of an investment. I don't buy it to make money, but I'm always kind of quite reassured that anything I do buy, any old systems, that I'll probably be able to get my money back again. So uh, yeah, let's take a wee look at the box, what's it saying on the side here? It's upside down. Right, what's it saying here? Ah, it's all in French. Right, okay, let's turn it around and see, is there English anywhere? Nope, that's English. Ah, it's got the two happy children playing it with some garish wallpaper just what we like. You can play cricket, you can play judo, fight with swords, snooker, driving, flight, yep, football. You can even become a pilot. Um, on the front, not very much. A couple of pictures of the joy pads and the console itself and it's got a happy crocodile. So let's open this bad boy up and see if it's pish or not. Now you can see there it's it looks like it's never been opened. I think the person that I bought it from did say they'd checked it. Apologies about the, the camera angles. It's, uh, I was struggling to try and get her. In fact, you know what? Hang on a second. I'm just going to pause this a wee second. Right, I've put it on the floor. I don't know why I didn't do that to begin with. I had it on the, uh, the worktop, but you could hardly see the thing. So anyway, yeah, let's... Uh, I don't want to really get in shot. I can try and avoid it. So. Yeah, looking at this, it does look like it's never been taken out of the, the box. Right, what's in the box, we ask? And what we've got a uh, GX4000 users, user instructions. That's good to know, it's got the warranty card, should it ever go faulty. Although it all appears to be in French again. You can see there, it's never been opened. That's it, that's all that's got in the box, apart from obviously the console itself. Can we see that? Well, move it up a wee bit. That looks alright. Turn that around a wee bit. There we go, that's better. Right, cardboard insert is absolutely cardboard. The uh, polystyrene insert looks perfect. This looks slightly shabby, but it's still sealed. It's even got a wee note tied in it. I'm guessing maybe the, the seller bunged this in. I don't know if you get that with it. What's interesting, it seems to be scarp to scarp. So it's like the old uh, buying a DVD uh, player. 
usually consoles have their own sort of uh, proprietary connection which is a pain in the arse. Right, so we've got the SCART, nice big long SCART cable. That's good, I'm glad I've got that because I might be struggling to actually find one. And then there's the console itself. Now, I've got to say it's surprisingly small looking. Let's zoom in again. Ugh. Move back a wee bit. Like so. Hi! It is very, very small looking. But you know what? It isn't actually a bad thing because uh, I don't have much room for, for huge consoles. So, yeah, let's. Whoops. So, yeah, it's very spaceship like. Something like out of Star Wars. So, on the front of it, I'm guessing we've got the joypad, joypad. Don't know what that is, no idea. Is that for a keyboard possibly? Then you've got some sort of networking capability. And does it have a year in it? No, it doesn't. Model GX 4000, blah blah blah. Supply, and then made in Japan. Oh. So, yeah, this is absolutely brand spanking new. You've obviously got the uh, headphone out output thing as well. I'm guessing that's the on off switch. On the back, what have we got? Right, we appear to have, that looks like two power output powers. Don't know what's going on there. S video possibly? I don't know. Um, you SCART, like I said, that's very unusual to get a SCART socket on the back of a console. And that looks like a big gaping hole. <laughs> yeah, is that, is that to air it or something? I don't know, it's got a huge big hole in it anyway. Nothing in it, so yeah, it's quite a, it's quite dinky looking. Very, very small looking. I actually thought it was going to be pretty big. I actually thought it was going to be the size of that piece of uh, polystyrene. But yeah, you can see there, absolutely brand new, which is always worrying, probably because it's going to be a lot of shite. But anyway, not to worry. So that is it, that's the unboxing thing. Now, I did just buy that. Because I believe there were apparently only, it's cartridge based. I didn't actually show you that, the cartridges go in the cartridge slot at the top there. You can see, yeah it's cartridge based, but apparently there was only something like 26 games released for it. Which uh, isn't an awful lot, and apparently a lot of the games were just uh, straight kind of ports from the, uh, the Amstrad computer. But, doing a bit of googling, there's a, a very clever chap, um, I can't remember his name offhand, he actually makes these uh, HD device things which allows you to put other games in it, but it basically allows you to put all the cartridge games and also some clever people have actually converted Amstrad CPC 464 computer games across to this thing. So here it is, this is the thing here. This arrived, uh, oops, this arrived yesterday, so uh, you can see there it's a little is that focusing? I don't think it is, is it? Yep, it's a little board and included as a little SD card as well. So yep, hopefully this thing will uh, allow me to run some games right away. And one thing, if you are going to buy one of these and use the SD card, it is very, very, very important you do not use the supplied uh, adapter. Apparently it doesn't have enough power to power the SD card and the console and it actually it can fry the motherboard so do not use the supplied one. Um, if you're going to buy one what I'll do is I'll, I'll just ask me, put a wee, uh, just post a comment. I bought this one, this was uh, recommended to me, it was £15, it's a proper, it's from RS Components so it's a good one, it's not one of your cheapy eBay jobs. This has got enough power to run the console with or without the SD card thing so do not use the SD card thing plus that with the normal power because you'll basically break it. Sorry, I forgot to look in and see what else is in here. Well, there we go, there's the... There's the power brick, obviously. Yep. I'm just a power brick, so don't use that one. It's fine to use that one, obviously, if you're not using the SD card thing, but if you are using it, do not use the supplied one. And in here... Ah, so you actually get two of these things. Let's have a look. I'm going to move it out of the road because it seems to be kind of trying to focus on that rather than this thing. Okay, right. Has that got a... If I just scratch that, it looks like ah, it's got one of these little things in it. 
It feels rather cheap and nasty. What do we expect from Amstrad? I mean, I'm, I'm looking for the, the shoulder buttons, but there's only two buttons here, plus a, the rather kind of cheapy looking D-pad. So anyway, yeah, let's, uh, let's try and get this thing powered up and see how we go on. Back in a flash. Right, okay, here we go. Right, uh, I had a bit, little bit of a, a sort of problem initially with this. Um, firstly, the enclosed uh, scap cable didn't work. Well, it did work, but the picture was all blurred. <coughs> so I've dug another one out the uh, out the loft, and it seems to be okay. So I'm quite happy with that. Um, more importantly, the bloody game is it burning rubber? I think it is. Um, that isn't included in the box. It should have been. So I've just. Uh, just ping the, the eBay seller a wee message. I mean, they should really make sure things like that are included. You know, I mean, that's kind of quite annoying that you've got to you've got to go and ask for something that was clearly stated in the advert. So anyway, enough of my grumbles. Let's uh, we seem to have it working okay now. So yep, you power this thing on. This little multi cart, and this is the screen you get. Um, it's it's basically come preloaded with all bits and pieces. You've got there plus games. 1 to 8 demos, GX4000 port, port, homebrew, other system. Um, not quite sure what that is. So let's just go through them one at a time. I'm not going to go through every single thing. Plus games. Now I think, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Yep, I think that is the actual cartridges that were released, so there's only, what, 25, 25, 26 games. There's burning rubber, so let's uh, let's give that one a go. See, they are very quick at loading. Now my pet hate, you've got to hold it forward to accelerate. Now we've got two fire buttons here, and considering this as an actual game written for this console, why could they not have used one of the buttons? Because if you're trying to hold it forwards, you're then having to turn as well. What you see though, the movement's pretty good. Now I'm not quite sure if this has got any more power than the CPC 464 computer. Because like I said, I really don't have any much knowledge of that. Um, I think it's the same. Whether it's got any more improved graphic chips, I'm not too sure. It might have more colours, but like I said, I'm really, really not too sure. Best thing to do is Google it. But yeah, this is this is pretty nice, considering it's a well, I was going to say it's a neat bit machine, yeah, but you know what? What do you think about? Although it looks nice, this was Kenny kind of trying to compete with the Mega Drive, and it's simply not on a par with the Mega Drive, that's for sure. I did read somewhere. I think it was Steve Ben who actually mentioned that. He reckons this is similar powered to a PC engine. So yeah, that is a burning rubber. So interestingly, you can pause a game. <laughs> There's a pause button. So let's on and off. Oops, let's take a look at another plus game. Batman the movie. Hey, brr, 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 brr. Operation Thunderbolt. Let's give that a go. Don't know how that will work with the uh, joy pads rather than a sort of light gun or like there again I suppose this game was written for the 8-bit machines using joysticks. Bad. The sort of scrolling buildings don't so much scroll rather than they just jump into view. But uh, yeah, that's, that's alright, that's certainly not the best example of this console I wouldn't have thought. Kill the cat! <laughs> I actually have to see where the cursor is. Yeah, that's Operation Thunderbolt. Try something else. We'll take a look at one more sort of a uh, cartridge. 
Now if I remember rightly, I'm sure I heard that Pang was supposed to be pretty good in this. Yeah, I've got to say, um, you know, even just based on a very, very short time of this, it doesn't, it feels more like an Amiga or an ST than, you know, an Amstrad CPC 464. Um, I'm sure that's what they were obviously setting out to do because, you know, why would you want to buy this if it was the same as uh, your old computer? So I'm guessing it must have a bit more power, colours or something. Like I said, I'm really not 100% sure, but it definitely looks quite impressive. But the biggest problem for this machine is there was just too many better machines out there when this came out. You know, had this been released, and I think again Steve Ben we mentioned that, had this machine been released possibly two or three years before it was, or before it did get released, it might have actually made a bit of an impact but it simply came out too late. Now apparently because this pretty much bombed, there weren't that many games, well, there weren't many games released, but there, they weren't released in large quantities, and so some of the games apparently are stupidly rare. And as such, um, go for daft money. And I'm certainly not going to go shelling out large amounts of money to play games. So uh, if you do get one of these, I would absolutely suggest you go and uh, pick up one of these wee SD card things. Because that makes a massive difference. Right, let's take a look at something else. Right, 128 demos. Is that a 128 machine? Hmm. I'm guessing it must be if it's on this, maybe not, because that, this um, device actually also works on, is it CPC Plus or something I think it is? So I'm guessing this hasn't got 128, we'll soon find out. Simply the best. Right, it's not doing anything. Yeah, I think this is only 64k. But that cartridge does actually work in these uh, these plus machines, so that'll be why these are there. Right, GX4000 port. Demos. Nah, let's come out, let's go to games. Right, here we go, excellent stuff. Now, you can see the number of games that are on this. These are basically Amstrad CPC 464 games that have been... Uh, ported by clever people across this machine which is excellent so let's uh, let's look for my favourite one of my favourite games on this it's uh, Sorcery got to be there surely whoops a daisy there's Sorcery there obviously they had to try and adapt it right infinite energy up down no go for no water walk up down no So there you go, there's a computer game running on the uh, on this console. Nothing there. Can I go through there? Yeah, I certainly can. I never really played this game much, but I always thought it looked really, really nice. Oh, bugger off. Game over, I think it might be. Yep, that's brutally hard. Right, let's take a look at something else. I wonder if it pauses. No, the pause function doesn't appear to work on these kind of converted games. 
Right, GX 4000 port games. Let's take a look at something else. Let's try. Uh, oh, what's the name of that game? Um, ah, there's Commando. Uh, let's give Commando a wee shot. I don't actually recall ever having played the Amstrad version of Commando. Obviously some of these games required you to press keys, so having to use a joypad, they've obviously had to try and uh ah, you go, press pause to start. <laughs> Excellent. Right, this isn't working, I'm guessing it's probably a different joystick port. Right, anyway, listen, we'll not bother with that one, let's move on then. I can't need arse unplugging it. Right, GX4000 port games. I did see earlier on, yeah, Donkey Kong. Now this apparently, according to my fellow Scotch, uh, Scottish person, Stuart Campbell, he did uh, he did an article on Retro Gamer Invincibility, no, for uh, yeah, Retro Gamer magazine, and he looked at all the home conversions of Donkey Kong, and he actually reckoned pound for pound that this was the finest home conversion of the arcade game. So there you go. Let's see if it's true. I'm sure I've actually played it. I think I've done a mashup of it. That's all very arcade like. And even the sounds. Pretty spot on. Ah, bollocks! Now this little uh, device um, that I bought, how much was it? It wasn't that much, was it about 50 quid? Was it as much as that? I'm not quite sure, but. I would say it's 100% worth it. You know, having... I didn't have any, I just had tapes, and that was primarily the reason, apart from the space of the monitor, that was primarily the reason... Oh, damn it, I never used Manstrad and I did have it, but I'll absolutely be using this, this is excellent. I'm, ha I'm delighted with the console, uh, and I'm really happy with the little SD thing. I wouldn't have bought the console. If I hadn't been able to get the, uh, the SD card thing. But come on, I'm usually not too bad at this game. I should probably have just not bored with the, with the hammer. <laughs> Deary me! I'm absolutely awful! Deary me, right, I'm going to go for one more go. I want to get to the next level. Yeah, this is this is a pretty spot on arcade conversion, so I can completely I can completely see what Stuart was getting at. Just get this. Ah, oh, come on, you idiot! I was just practicing jumping there. This time, absolutely next level. Let's go. Yeah, the joy pads. They're alright, they're not the greatest. They're certainly not Nintendo quality, but you know what, they're functional enough. Oh, bollocks. Don't come down, ah! <laughs> that was certain to happen. You absolute numpty. You should never, ever, ever take a chance like that because you know it's just not going to work like this. Oh, ah, dearie me, how did that happen? Right, I'm absolutely abysmal at that. Right, let's take a look at another couple of games. 
Right, GX4000 port games. Um, Bomb Jack. Let's see, there's Ghosts and Goblins. In fact, I tell you what, I know this one up here. One of my favourite games, Beachhead. In fact, no, wait a minute. Sorry, I'm just chopping and changing my mind. Here's Bruce Lee. Let's take a look at this. But, you know what, I absolutely love just how... Ah, so, pressing the fire button. So, in some respects, I've actually made it even better. Ah, right, okay, right, I was going to say, they've, they've changed it now, that both buttons do the same thing. But, yeah, I love the, the fact that they've been able to change uh, these games and get them running on this machine. Graphic wise it's nice, it's kind of got spectrum sound effects which is a bit odd. I'm going to get killed here. Oh you sod. Take that fat boy. Yep, this runs perfectly. Although the noise when he runs, it sounds more like static than an actual sound effect. Come on! Up! Oh. Right! A couple more. What about Renegade? That I'm sure that was a game that required keys, so I don't know how that would actually work. Let's see if it's on there first. Hmm, Renegade, right? There seems to be different versions, so let's just go for this. Renegade. No idea how this will work. Ugh! Oh, there we go. Right, none of the buttons work, so is it pause? You know what? Ah, oh, here we go. Right, I'm thinking it might be uh, it might be joystick port number two. So I'm not going to bother changing over. Right, we'll just go and have a look at one last game, guys. In fact, you know what? Let's have a look at the other stuff. Port Burger Party Frogger. Let's take a look at this. No idea what this is going to be. doesn't appear to be anything. I'm guessing that might be one of these uh, one of the games that's again it only works on the computer. Right, homebrew Blue Angel. Let's see what this is. 2010 cartridge edition. Ah oh, dearie me, what the hell am I, is this? Right, I've got absolutely no idea what I'm supposed to be doing here. Don't know. Right, stuff that. <laughs> I can't even bother learning it. Um, homebrew other. Don't know what that is. Let's not go and tinker about with it. Cartridges plus three. Right, again, really not too sure. Right, now there are actually dip switches on the front of the uh, that little cartridge, apparently depending on what switches up will access different areas of the SD card. Now let's take a look at one last port and then we'll uh, draw this video to a close. There's the Airwolf. I'll do. Right, the fan button seems to work. This is one of the most fiendishly difficult games ever written. Ever. Ever. It's a shame because it's actually a really, really nice looking game. 
but they just made the difficulty level impossible. I mean, you're constantly moving down, so you're trying to. What am, I, what am I trying to do here? <laughs> Did I kill this thing? Oh, here we go. What the hell? It takes an age to turn. How can I turn some facing that way? Yeah, if anything, this is even harder than the C6401, which is absolutely impossible anyway. Auto fire. It makes shooting this wall a wee bit easier. Right, yeah, anyway, that's enough. That's enough of that. Okay, right, that is it, guys. Let's just, before I go, let's just take another quick wee look at the games you're getting for your, your buck. So Port Wise Games, what have we got? You can see there, 3D Starfighter, and oh, no, I thought it was 3D Starstrike. Um, you know, Arkanoid, Badlands, loads of games, Beachhead, Beyond Ice Palace, Bomb Jack. I don't know how many games there actually are in this. Continental Circus, Dan Dare, Enduro Racer, all the Dizzy games. Mr. Chris, uh, Nova Bug will love this one. Let's take a look just just for Chris, just for you, mate. Let's take a look at Fantasy World Dizzy. Infinite Life Snow, thank you. So CNG Soft must be the company that do a lot of these uh, ports, which is really nice of them. There you go, Dizzy in all his egg-like glory. Now is it my imagination, when I mu uh, move, the music seems to slow you bit. No idea, because I never really played the Dizzy games. I'm going to attempt to try and play it. So that is it guys, that is the Amstrad GX4000. Like I said, I got that for 35 quid plus postage. It was just, just over 40 quid I think it was I paid. Um, I wouldn't have bought it had it not been for the fact that I could have got that little cartridge thing. Um, that really, really opens it up to me. The great thing is, it's a form factor of this. The Amstrad computer takes up a lot of space. It's quite a big keyboard. Um, you've obviously got the monitor as well to, to sort of try and locate somewhere. This thing here, it's not much bigger than a Spectrum. It really isn't. It's not much bigger than a, a rubber keyed Spectrum. So, you know, space wise it doesn't take up a lot. Um, but as you can see there, it does an absolute sterling job of uh, allowing you to play your Amstrad games. Um, so for that, I think it's an excellent little purchase. I'm delighted with it. So that's it guys, um, as usual, thank you very much uh, for watching the video, if you've got any comments on this machine or about the card, just ask, pop your comments below and as